Hi, today we're going to have a look at the 2022 Ordinary Level Cash Budget, which is question nine on the exam paper. So as per usual, we're given some assets and liabilities at the start of the period. We're given uh, sales and purchases for the five months, and then we're given some additional notes. And we are asked to prepare a cash budget for Joan Smith uh, with expected receipts and payments for five months from June to October and also a total column. And then for part B of the question, we're asked to prepare a budgeted balance sheet at the end of October. So first of all, we start off with the cash budget. So the first thing in our cash budget we're gonna need are our receipts or our money in. So they will come from our sales. So we're given the sales from June to October and it says all sales are on credit and are paid for one month after sale. So whatever we sell, we get the money a month later. So the June sales I will get in July. So June I'm going to put into July and the amount is 68,000. July's sales I will get in August will be 65,000. August sales of 88,000 I will get in September. September sales of 85,000 I will get in October. And I don't have to do November. October sales I will get in November, but I don't have to do November. So all I'm missing now is June's sales. Where do I get June's sales from? Well, sales are to debtors, okay? So this debtors figure at the start of June, these are the people that owed me money. I will get that money in June. So in June, my receipts are going to come from my debtors because sales always come go with debtors. So I'm going to put in 92,800. Sometimes the question might say all sales are on credit and are paid for two months after sale. If, if it says that they're paid for two months after sale, then in debtors, we will be given the breakdown of the previous two months. So in this case, it would be April and May. So if it was two months credit, they would have to give me April and May. And then April, I would get in June, May, I would get in July and so on. So that's all that you have to do for a seat. So I just had to total that across. And I'm going to total these down. There are no other receipts. So the only receipts I have are from sales. So that's going to be the same again. Payments. So my first payment is going to be for purchases. Uh, purchases are from creditors. So all purchases are in credit and are paid for one month after, except 30000 for cash. Cash purchases you pay for straight away because cash you pay over the counter, you pay for cash straight away. Uh, so 30,000 cash in August and everything else was on credit and we paid for one month later. So whatever month it says here uh, for the cash payment, so in this case, it's August, I would always highlight that month and the next month because the other two months are gonna be affected. So if it says the cash payment was in August, I would go up here to August and I'd highlight August and September. If it was if it the cash payment was July, I would highlight July and August. Whatever month it mentions in the next month, and two months that would be affected. So my June purchases I would pay for in July. So that June purchase of 34,000 I pay in July. The July purchases I would pay in August. So the July purchases of 46,000 I would pay in August, but then there's 30,000 cash in August also, which I pay for straight away. So in August, I'm gonna pay for my July purchases of 46,000, plus the 30,000 cash. Okay, so in August, I pay for July's purchases plus the 30,000 cash. That's why I've highlighted that cell. Then in September, I will pay for August purchases previous months. So August purchases I would pay for in September, 52,000. But of that 52,000, 30 if it was for cash, I've already included. So I'm going to have to take that away. So in September, I'm going to pay for August purchases of 52,000 minus the 32,000. So this is equals 52,000 minus the 30,000 cash. So the 30,000 cash I'm adding in August and I'm taking it away in September. And then October, I'm back to normal. I'm going to pay for September purchases. So September purchases are 44,000. 
uh, uh, October purchases I would pay for November. October I pay for November, but I don't have to do the November column. I'm only asked to do it from June to October. So where do I get the purchases for the first month? So again, purchases go with creditors. Okay, so I go back here to my assets and liabilities and I look at creditors. At the start of June, I am owed, at the start of June from creditors, I am owed 70,800 and I will get that money in June. So here is 70,800. And again, I will total those across. Rent is the next thing we have to look at. So now for the down through, my bullet point sales are done, purchases are done, rent. So sometimes you'll be given the rent per month and sometimes per annum. So if you're given it per annum, you have to, that's per year, so you have to divide it by 12. So rent is 60,000 per annum or per year, and we pay that monthly. So to work out the monthly figure, it's just gonna be 60,000 divided by 12, 5,000. And that's gonna be the same every month. And that comes to 25,000. The next thing, equipment is bought in July for 8,000 cash. So I'm gonna to have to go to July, just make sure I put in the correct month. July is the second month. So 8,000 goes there. And I didn't buy equipment any other month. So they would be all zero. And that comes to 8,000. And my last expense are wages. And the wages are given to us per month, so I don't need to divide by 12 or anything. They're just 18,000 per month. So they're 18,000 each month. Which is 90,000. And then the closing stock, that uh, just goes in the balance sheet. We don't need to put that into our cash budget. And the net profit goes in the balance sheet, not in the cash budget. So they are all my expenses for the moment, our payments. So now to get my total payments, I just add these four figures down. And I do the same each month. Just add down four payments to give me the totals. Now I need to get my net cash. So net cash is just A minus B. So my net cash is my receipts, which is my money in minus my payments, which is my money out. So receipts of 92,800 minus payments of 93,800. Uh, it's minus 1,000, so it's a negative cash position. I do the same for each month. So the second month, it will be 68 minus 65. I'm up 3,000. I budget to be up 3,000 again. Remember, when you're doing a budget, you're looking forward. And um, so the next month, I'm going to be down 34,000. I plan to be down 34,000 because I'm getting in. I plan to be, get receipts of 65 and payments of 99. And that was so big because there was a cash payment that month also. Then um, 88 minus 45 is 43. 85 minus 67 is 18. And 398,800 minus 369,800 is 29,000. So net cash is just your total receipts minus your total payments each month. Opening cash. So for my opening cash, I'm gonna go back to the question. I'm gonna go up here to the start of June. That's where I'm starting, I'm starting in June. So my cash at the start of June, see here, cash at the start of June was 38,000. So that's my opening cash. Now, whatever figure you have for opening cash in the first month, you put the same figure in the total column. That's why they're both in green. To highlight, they should be the same figure. And now we just add these down. So I have minus 1,000 plus 38,000 is plus 37,000. Whatever my closing cash is in June is going to be my opening cash the next month in July. Okay, so now I'm going to add these down again. 3,037 is 40. Similarly, my closing cash here is going to be my opening cash the next month. Again, minus 34 plus 40 is plus 6,000. Closing cash here is going to be my opening cash the next month. Again, I'm going to add these down. Uh, 43 and 6 is 49. Closing cash here is going to be my opening cash here. Again, I'm going to add these down. Uh, 18 and 49 is 67. Again, 29 and 38. Now, uh, this figure here does not go here because uh, First of all, there's a figure there, it can't go there. And secondly, it's not the next month, it's the total column. If that was the next month, then the closing cash would be the opening cash. But this isn't the next month, it is the total column. 
So now I'm just going to add these figures down again and I come to 67,000 and these two figures in blue should be the same uh, if your cash budget is done correctly. So that's the cash budget part of it completed. Now we just have to do the budgeted balance sheet. So this is a straightforward enough balance sheet. It's only a small balance sheet. Um, anyone who does question one should be uh, familiar with balance sheets. So the first thing are fixed assets. So in the question, and again, we're kind of going to start off with our assets and liabilities here. And if there's any changes, we'll, we'll uh, use the most up-to-date figure. But this kind of gives you an idea of what should be in the balance sheet. So fixed assets, we're going to fixed assets. And stock, cash and debtors, they are current assets. So we have a look at assets first of all. So fixed assets at the start of June were 280,000. But we bought an asset. We bought equipment. Equipment is an asset. We bought that for 8,000. So we're doing the balance sheet at the end of October. So at the start of June, they were 280. And then we bought equipment for 8. So my total assets would be 288 at the end of October. Uh, now, current assets, closing stock. We're given the closing stock figure in the question, the second last bullet point. So, closing stock at the end of October, it tells me that is 38,200. There's no working out there. I just put in 38,200. Again, I do not use the closing stock figure from the start because that's at the start of June. We're doing it at the end of October, the balance sheet. So, I use this figure. Uh, debtors. Now, my debtors are people that owe us money. So, the debtors at the end of October will be my October sales because I will not get that money until November. Okay, so debtors will be, and remember debtors go with sales, uh, creditors go with purchases. So for my debtors, it's going to be the last month's sales, which is the October sales. So for debtors, I'm going to go up to my sales. The last month, October, is 83,000. So sales go with debtors, purchases go with creditors. So my debtors is my last month sales, which is October sales. And my cash budget, I'm going to take from up here, is the final figure for my cash budget, this 67,000. So now I'm going to add these three current assets, and they come to 188,200. So now it's my liabilities. So here I can see liabilities are creditors. So my first one here is liabilities less than one year are current liabilities, it's creditors. And then down the bottom of the balance sheet, I'm going to put the capital. So for current liabilities, I'm just going to put in creditors. And remember, purchases go with creditors. So my creditors will be my October purchases because I'm not going to pay for them until November. So at the end of October, I still owe that money to the creditors, the people I purchased from, because I'm not going to pay for that until November. So under creditors, it'll be my last month's purchases. So again, if I go up to purchases in October, the last month was 51,200. Sorry, 51,200. Okay, so now over here on the right hand side, I'm just going to get my current assets, just your current assets, take away your current liabilities, 137,000. And then in the final, in the third column, I'm going to add those to my fixed assets above. If it was a negative figure, you'd take it away. Whatever sign there, they're both pluses, so I'd add them to give me 425,000. So that, that's one of the balances of my balance sheet. Now I just need to finish off my balance sheet and get it to balance. So the next heading is finance by. Underneath that, I'm going to put in capital. So capital is money put in by the owners. The capital at the start of June was 380,000. It doesn't say that any more money was invested by the owners. So the capital is going to remain at 380,000. So capital, 380,000. Net profit, then, we are given the net profit in the question. In the last bullet point, it tells us the net profit for the five months is 45,000. So I'm going to put that in net profit. And again, I'm going to add the two of those. 380,000 plus 45 gives me my 425, which is called my capital employed. And again, these two figures in yellow are the same, so my balance sheet balances. And that is the question complete. Sometimes there might be a small bit of theory also, um, but we look at all the theory together someday. Thank you for watching the video.